I've got watercolour paper. I've got my um, my inspiration photo sitting on the side there, so I've got it near me. Um, I've masking taped it down. I don't usually go to the bother of doing all that stuff you're supposed to do when you stretch it because I find that I do all that and it still wobbles all over the place. So I just live with the wobbles. I like wobbles. We're going to be happy. We're going to be wobble friendly uh, with the paper and just see what happens. So I'm going to start off. I want to um, start with some of these beautiful colours I've got. I'm going to be using um, a big brush. You want to find start off with the biggest brush that you can sort of easily get your hands on. So I've got quite a nice chunky round brush and I've got a feeling that my favourite brush is now, this is hiding from me this morning, which may be um, um, doing to my son attacking my workstation last night because he does like to throw everything on the floor. So, yep, yeah, I'm just wetting my brush. I've only got, at the moment I can only find this round one, so I'm going to use this round one. I'm not too bothered, whichever brush you're comfortable going for. I quite like... Um, Japanese and Chinese brushes. I've got quite a nice one, a nice set, and these were only a couple of pounds for a set of three on Amazon, so they're probably not the most expensive brushes, but I quite like the way they work too. I've got um, on my paper here, at the moment it's dry, so I'm going to add some water first of all. So the first thing I'm doing is like sort of painting, invisible painting. So I'm just trying to get a load of water onto that surface, and this is when the paper's going to go all wobbly and bobbly. Another good tip is if you don't have a huge brush or you want to get a lot of water on is to use your garden spray bottle and just spray the surface to damp down the paper. So if you want to get an overall wetness, yeah, yeah. It's completely up to you. Some people like just to watch, some people like to paint along. That's why I video them because then you can do a bit of both. You know, you can do a first version now and then you can come back and do another version when you've sort of done it once. Often when you do it the first time, you may call them a sort of, you go, okay, now I see what I want to do so I can go back and do it again. So it's, it's completely up to you. Right, so I'm gonna use my big, jet, my big Chinese brush um, I don't know, there's a degree of wetness, so you can see a bit of wet shine on the surface. You don't want to like do it so it's paper mache, obviously, but you want to sort of like get like a skin, you want a skin of water over the surface, because I'm hoping that what we're going to get, now with this, because it's, although it's a paint along, you're going to be doing something different to me, because every image should come out slightly differently, and, and, it, and if you find a shape that really goes with you, go you really enjoy go with it and see where it takes you don't worry about you're not really trying to do the same as me you're just kind of doing you know you know, it's like we go to a restaurant we don't eat the same meal but we all enjoy the, the, the atmosphere that's kind of what we're thinking so I'm going to start I want to get a large sort of round area in the top here for one of the shapes and I'm just going to paint it on I do a an outline first and I'm choosing this nice apricot layers of sort of apricot and yellow and pink and that sort of thing but I'm just doing the circle look at my poor brush it's just suddenly decided to to molt clearly it's losing its winter coat on my paper I'll flick those off later and what I love is when you get these moments of things like moving and spreading across the paper so I want that to happen I want that I don't want it to be a regular circle when I finished I want it to be something different and something to move through it and when I've got some paint on there's a slight sort of area of darkness sort of on the underneath side here so I can just then put a sweep of um, a heavier colour or heavier stronger orange something like that just into that section there so it's just got something a bit different yeah a bit sort of more weighty on there I'm just going to flip my camera because I think it's mirror reversing it and I think I always find that um, weird so let me just um, yeah, my cat, can you see it the right way around? Let's try that. Don't worry if it doesn't, it really doesn't matter. As you get, if it doesn't, um, if you don't get a huge amount of bleed, just stick some more water on it. I'm just gonna pick those, those are gonna annoy me. I'll get off of the hairdryer. Right, so if, you, if it's not getting loads of bleed, chuck some more water on top first. You know, we're not, it's, it's really, it's really, so I say it's not about creating what you see in front of you, it's using that as a starting point. So what I'm picking out first are the ones that are on top. So I'm going to then pick out, the next one I can see is this lovely turquoise blue one. So I'm going to come in and just with a sort of, with a turquoise blue, another sort of circle around about here. You can see it's very, very free. It's really not about trying to make this um, into um, 
and we're not doing a nature illustration in that sort of sense of being representational so I'm just going to put some blue I'm the mo I'm going to come back and we're going to do the circles in the center are going to be we're going to become dark the so sort of holes and the sort of crevices but at the moment I'm going to leave them as, as if they were white um, circles because I'm going to come back and work on them later so again I'm just going to let that sort of come in there so that comes a shape just sort of sitting on that surface there and I want to get I can see looking at it there's a slightly more darkness again under here and if it runs we don't mind we like runs we like drips this is all just because eventually they're going to be anything that we do we just think of it as an area we can explore with our pen lines later so the painting is quite quick and then we would sort of dry it off again or we'd leave it to dry a lot of the time when I'm doing this what I'll do is um do maybe like half a dozen paintings so the really quick painting first and then leave them to dry overnight and then I'm um, often I'll iron them because they'll be a bit crinkly and ironing is a great and iron's a useful thing to have in a art workshop and then I'll come back and I'll work on them and being able to leave them overnight gives you a bit of distance from what you're doing and allows you to see them in a fresh light so I've got my orange I've got my blue I can see a kind of lilac -y, uh, urchin on this sort of side here and I quite like that because the lilac purple tones are a gate sort of like in between the orange and the blue they're like a sort of a little bit of both so we're going to get a purpley lilac-y kind of circle on this side and we're not trying to do um, anything too representational that's a bit bluey I want to get a bit more purple into it but I like the fact that we've got these colours working um, in that sort of way we've got our reds we've got our hot colors we've got our cool colors and if you look a lot of the background colors are green so we can come in later and the background's going to be much greeny and that's going to hopefully let these colors kind of pop forwards but we're leaving again that bit of paper just showing through so we're not doing a solid circle we're leaving a little area of sort of paper it gives it its lovely sort of translucent feel you can see how this big one on the wet paper is really spread out if yours hasn't as much it doesn't matter because everything will be slightly different everything's doing its own thing but we can come back later and add a bit more structure onto that but we're going to the paper will be drying as we work because particularly in this hot weather we'll be getting it drier and then where I've got this sort of purple one here I can see the most dark area is somewhere over here so I can go back in and just put a patch of darkness sort of shadow into there just into that one section so they're getting that same sort of weight we've got the sense of the shadow underneath them here right so that's um, my first layer of paint on um, I say we work very very quickly we don't have to worry and think too much what I'm going to do then is I want to put some green into the background now but I'm going to sort of instead of really thinking about where the green is going to go if you look at all the circles you get like these sort of negative spaces between them you get where the circle of the urchin sit together you get almost like triangles so what I'm going to do actually is pick out the triangles first and then the sort of circle the sort of background circles will do their own thing around those so the color I want to pick out is this quite dark um I'm going to call it like a, again I'm going to go for a very dark purple but I'm going to use so I'm going to use my purple paint I'm going to put some red into it so it's got a more red tone and then to darken it down I'm going to use some dark browns I try and avoid darkening colors with black in the way that you can do with some other paint forms because I find with watercolor if you put too much black into it it really makes it quite dead and chalky looking and um you know it's sort of like it, it rather kills the tone so I want to get shadow I find it works better to have um, to use either the opposite color or sort of use darker browns and those sort of darker greens and blues to get my shadow in so what I'm looking at is I can see quite a strong triangle or like a sort of v-shaped triangle in here so I'm going to just put that in maybe it's more like a sort of diamond shape that's going to come and appear sort of on that side and you can see how that starts to give some definition to that orange shape up here and some of that blue shapes there so really it's just seeing that as an as, a, as if it was a an object that negative space so it just sort of comes in there and then between I well I'm doing it's really it's like a purple with dark brown mixed together because I, I, I don't want as I said I don't want it to be really blackish so the purple the, is the blue shadow and the, the brown gives it some warmth so that just sort of comes in and starts to add a shape there and then maybe in between these two it doesn't matter we, we're not I keep literally saying we're not trying to copy it but so we're just trying to get a feel of it so we can edit out some of these if there's too many shapes then I can see a sort of Y shape again sort of and then all oh, that's opening out into all oh, sorts of like a sort of hourglass kind of like or a sort of 
some sort of infinity symbol just sort of appearing around there just sort of and it becomes sort of like in fact they become into points don't they and it's almost like um a crown of sort of points coming round and you can see how that's leaving a space on the paper i might just have to tilt my camera down a bit so we're just catching all of that um they don't make cameras cameras are designed to be completely in the other format to um paintings annoyingly because they're, they're never portrait they're always sort of landscape and i find i tend to do most things in portrait annoyingly um, so that you can see how by just seeing those sort of lines, those sort of shapes cutting out, that kind of gives us um, a, a white shape appeared in the middle, like a sort of circular shape. And then up here between these two, um, on the, between these two and these orange and blues, there's again, there's quite a strong, there's a very strong bit of shadow against that edge. So I'm just going to roughly see that kind of appearing up there. And maybe sneaking around that edge there but I'm not trying to reproduce the urchins I'm just using them as a base and I'm not going to do a lot more than that I want to make this a bit darker so once I've kind of mapped those in I can come back in with some more purple and if that is looking too purple I can come back with your sort of like chocolatey browns burnt umber those kind of colors they make for really good shadows because they have that sort of dark tone and I can just layer that on top just to sort of see how that fits in. Okay, so I've got, I want to make that a bit darker now. You can start to see once you get a bit of, the, as the paint dries, it, it, the watercolour, the first level of watercolour dries, it's very, um, it'll go a lot fainter. So you keep wanting to come back and kind of work in a bit more. And I've used some more blue into that. The blue really helps to sort of make those shadows nice and punchy and they're sort of shapes, but they're shapes that we can explore. We don't have to keep them as being shadows. They can stay being, they can become their own shapes as well. And maybe I'm gonna take, I don't wanna to come too far around here because I've got some nice trails of paint, but if you don't have that, you might want to come around and just make that a bit heavier and, and you know, we can see sort of something. So we are hopefully getting a sense of layering now that we're getting, even though this is very sort of quick and rough, we're getting these layers sort of forming we want to get a bit of green in so I'm just going to mix up I'm going to go for um, quite a nice springy kind of green but I want to put a little hint of the blue green in it so I'm starting with that kind of emerald I suppose and then I'm going to go into the sea green and just I will put some blue with it just to sort of give it that slightly more minty kind of vibe for some of them and then I'm just going to pop some greens in into those sort of shapes that we've got around so the white shapes that are definitely background we can start just to sort of knock those back with a little bit of green um, but not sort of like again still not trying to be too representational I want to get that one a bit yellower just sort of put some of those in don't know how much green they're going to put in just some of it it's always quite a good background color and I don't mind if they mix and they because it's again I keep sort of relentlessly saying this is just a starting point we don't know what elements we're going to pick out where we've got these orange traveling over the green I think I may just not overpaint them I just want to paint into them so that we've got some sort of strange thing happening there again you might not have that on yours but you might have it somewhere else you might have that happening in a different part which you can sort of play with because we're just using these ideas of kind of overlapping and um, things on top of other things and this lovely texture which we're going to look at in more detail later all right i think i want to put some more shadow some of the shadow color into underneath my blue one here because it's quite a nice um shape of shadow i'm sorry i'm trying to get my camera to sit it's on one of these sort of telescopic things it's surprisingly it's supposed to be easy to alter and it surprisingly isn't very just gonna try and get that straighter no hang on i'm gonna need two hands to do this because it's really it's you know it's really tough so that you can't knock it too much accidentally but that's a bit better i think it's a bit straighter come that way a bit there we go and so underneath this blue one i want to get some of the shadow color in and i say just sort of like look for some of these shapes that you might want to bring out and don't worry where it's going we've got you know there's loads more to do on it yet so this is just like the underground the base kind of coat that we're putting down giving us something to work on later so I'm just going to make that shape sort of stronger and it should be all quite strange and whooshy and nobody knows what it is and that's fine because it doesn't have to be anything 
at the moment. And then I think we want to get some central holes in. So now we can actually go for um, a really dark colour. So um, we can get some black paint and maybe put a bit of blue into it. And we're going to start, we're going to just decide where some of these sort of lovely deep, deep dark holes are going to be. So in the middle of the orange one, there's quite a sort of strong one there. And in the middle of that one, and somewhere on this one. And I think we're going to make, because I want to make quite a nice feature of those as being sort of like wells of, of, of uh, texture and sort of darkness. And then I'm just going to make that a little bit darker. And we're not going to do a huge amount more with paint, believe it or not. We're going to sort of stop there and kind of see what we've got. Um, so we've got like just this sort of really strange, totally abstract, peculiar background. And uh, at the moment it doesn't look like um, anything much. What I think I might do is now seeing that we do have these kind of quite stripy um, quality of the urchins, I think I'm going to now that we've dried up a bit, I'm going to just start doing a few lines that come in towards those. Now we've got our centre points in, just bringing some lines onto that damp paper, but um, moving it into that centre. And by giving them a little bit of a curve, that just starts to kind of give that a feel of some of those lines. So we might work with those. If they're too stripy, I can then get, once I put them on, I can get a wet brush and soften them down a bit so just by sort of painting with water over the top so they don't become too much like sort of tiger stripes because we'll add some more definition to them later but just so that you've got a sense of some of that banding kind of coming in so I think that's quite attractive and then I think you know this is when we can start playing with it and get um, um, a bit carried away we can maybe bring some of them flicking onto some other surface and on the orange one look that lovely orange one let's get some of those lines through that dark section coming up sort of round like that um, just sort of and I put just put a little bit of a curve on them because it helps to indicate that that surface is um, not completely round but again I don't want this to be too stripy so once I get them on water wet brush moving it back and forth just almost like as if I'm sort of rubbing it out with the water just to sort of blend them down a bit. Now if you have never tried painting with ink I would really recommend getting some ink to paint with because it is so much fun and it has a really lovely sort of live quality. It's it's The colours are very kind of um, um, uh, translucent, they have a lovely sort of glowing quality to them which um, is really fun to play with. So I mention that because I immediately want to get my inks out and paint some of these colours in ink, but I'm not going to because you haven't probably haven't got inks to hand, so um, that wouldn't be sort of uh, wouldn't be fair. But um, if you've ever um, see like a set on special offer or something, do try getting some painting inks to have a go with because they're really good fun. Right, and if you're like me, you can't resist art materials at the best of times. And I'm just going to put a few stripes onto the purple. But maybe they can start moving off. Maybe they can spread out in a kind of way that isn't, well, you know, they can get some movement into them just because we can. Right, so we've not got a lot more to do in that sort of paint um, surface bit because we're going to come working uh, with, the, with our sort of fine line pens now. So hopefully what you've got is your version of this surface. So it should be different from mine. It should hopefully you picked maybe up on some colours that you really like, you've got some shapes that you've picked up differently. So it should be hopefully different because it's not about um, copying, it's about exploring together. So I'm going to grab my hair dry now and just dry this off. So um, if you can do the same or you can put it in a big patch of sunshine so that it's going to dry as quickly as possible. I'm also going to um, mute myself because nobody wants to have my hair dryer blasting at them and I shall be back in a couple of minutes. Right there we go so mine is quite dry now and I managed to blow my source material off the um, wall as well so I just pick that up too um, and what you'll find is that as you dry it the paper will flatten out a bit because it's wet because it buckles and the drying makes it shrink back into a slightly um, more smooth surface. Right okay so 
what we want to do now is to explore the surfaces that we have with pen line and with ink um, because I find that um, it's I have more control over ink than I do of paint and the other thing I want you to think about is that we don't make too many decisions about what we're doing what we want to do is look at what the paint has done and work with what the paint has given us so I'm going to slightly move my focus into this blue um, one here because um, these the sort of ink stage can be as, as long or as involved as you want it to be but I tend to find that what I'm going to do I'm going to work on this one in a bit more sort of to more towards the finish and then we'll see what time we've got left because I want to see how you can develop these sort of surfaces just by using really quite simple um, mark making elements so what I say when I say we let the paint dictate what we're looking at so where we've got this dark center here the first thing I'm going to do is draw around it and I'm just following what the paint has done so I'm trying to capture every little spread or mark or um, bobble of the paper I want that to be where I go and I, that's what I'm following so I don't have to make a decision about where this is because the paint has made the decision for me so I'm just going to follow that round and then immediately I've got that shape and just by adding that little bit of darkness isn't that amazing how that suddenly gives that a lot more definition and pop and it suddenly sort of like locates it and you know I don't know, I think I think sort of when you start doing this it's quite unusual um, and I want to then bring I've got another I've got some of these lines here that I've painted on so I'm going to follow that again with my pen and just see where that goes and decide which side of all these sort of lumps and bubbles I want to go on and you can usually find the next piece you want to work on um, without too much problems and then you think well, I don't know where to go next and you go well just find the next one don't worry about the whole thing at the moment we just want to pick out just see if you can find a nice interesting pattern in the paint that's there so we can just sort of like follow that I'm using a 0.54 pen I would go for like the middle range to start off because then you can go both smaller and bigger um, if you go too small too soon or too big then you sort of you've got nowhere to go from that so now I'm sort of getting these quite nice sort of ripples coming through looking at the urchin they do have these sort of circles so when I've sort of established all these sort of lines here I'll show you what I'm going to do next and I'll do some more lines I would then look to do some circle just you know like almost like oh hello is someone asking a question or was that a did I have I? Oh, sorry about that. That's the joys of that's the joys of interneting, isn't it? Um, so I'm just coming down, and I'm just doing some circular shapes that kind of fit into the width of that paint line. So as the paint line gets smaller, um, I can do smaller circles, and as it gets bigger, my circles kind of get bigger, and I'm just sort of seeing that as kind of texture and just letting them move down through the shape and then sort of come off the edge and they start just being um, they start being both texture and they start being um, form as well so then I've got to think about how I want to bring so which ones I'm going to bring this one in and you can see I like the way this one is sort of come off that edge there because it kind of gives that a real kind of three-dimensional quality and just thinking about the paint, thinking about the shapes that I want to put in and then maybe some of these shapes, instead of just doing a single circle I can do a circle with an outline around it so it's sort of like um, doubled and that starts to become like a little form in its own you know it's got that sort of slightly barnacle -y feel to it that I can bring round and and these shapes are going to fit in and it's just looking for where my paint is going and that's I think you know one of the things that I love about doing this is that you are sort of like you're not having to think about this you just get to focus on the marks and the shapes and you can get really drawn into doing this and really seeing how it's sort of you're just using lines that you like and if you find a shape that you like that works for you then you can use that again and again and it's sort of and then if you find one that works less well you just stop using it and it sort of just blends in I'm just going to bring some lines through 
this sort of blue section here and what I quite like doing is I get a line in and then I just follow it and what I'm letting it do is just slightly move further apart as I come down so starting quite close together at the top and then sort of following the one that's gone before but letting it kind of fan out and by doing that we kind of get this feeling of the shape because it's sort of got that as it comes towards the edge it kind of helps to sort of give it a kind of curved feel so again just let that move out onto the kind of edge and I really like building up surfaces with lines like this and you sort of get a ripple in that surface with that line you can just follow it with your pen and I always say this and it sounds so simplistic but it's really important to get into your head the closer you draw your black lines the darker you get because you're putting more pen onto the paper so you can control really easily control the tones if I want to make a bit of shadow I just bring the lines close together and then if I can open them out and I'm bringing the light and the color back into that place so it sort of like allows me to darken up some areas and, and lighten up other areas just by laying the pen closer together and then opening it out again and you get these sort of lovely areas of colour um, and inside this sort of dark hole here so I'll start doing all the way around but I'm sort of like moving around because I'm trying to show you different bits in the hopes that you can go away and then explore with all these sort of different ideas with this sort of dark centre like here I want to make that much darker but I don't want my if, my if my lines go in the same direction as these it will kind of blend in too much so I'm going to take some lines that go across this shape and um, just to kind of fill in to kind of be dark but there's a little bit of light coming in so I'm going to stop the lines just to leave a little bit of space so that there's a sense of a, a light just catching the inside of that form and again I can pack them quite close together but they don't have to be completely together and I can then come in and I can fill that in if I want to do a very dark space I tend to sort of do lines first and then I can do more and build up the shadow rather than again going straight in for like a big thick marker pen and colouring it all in dark because I might not want to have it as dark as that all over so but hopefully I want to make this push back and look like it really is a kind of hole kind of a dark space inside there so if I now want to get that darker I can go back and draw lines in between the lines that I've drawn because again the more ink you put on the more shadow you're getting and you can see that sort of really shadowing now and becoming a hole that you could sort of go and put your finger into um, like that and I can just slightly put more uh, gently put more lines in between and just leave that little patch to kind of be like and that kind of gives me um, the feeling that there's some highlight inside where the light's getting in there but then I can carry all these lines through round here and then where I get to the sort of edge I'm going to do these ones in just sort of like because I can come back and add lots of pattern and surface to these and you can keep building it up and building it up and look, there's a nice dot of paint there so let's draw around that and make that into a real kind of feature just see what you found there and it, where we've got this edge here um, we can now define that edge of this shape because it, it's some bits of it are bleeding some of it is staying quite round so again we're going to follow that kind of edge coming round and because it's overlapping this one here so I just bring my pen line round and through and deciding where this blue one is and it's now standing out really strongly against the background and I'm just going through so even though it's very faint colors I can just pick out where this edge is coming and then with this one the one that's then sort of coming next to it I want to sort of get this in now so again I'm still only following the paint line because the paint line has kind of given me um, the place to go so I'm just deciding where that sort of shadow is going to come and again on this one here I can just pick out that sort of surface and I'd like to get some real darkness into these sort of the negative spaces that we picked out before so we can see where they come so this one you know has got this sort of really dark triangle of space or sort of um, like a, a Y shape so but I don't want it to just be a sort of flat space I'd like to kind of build up with some texture in that to kind of make that a bit more interesting if I just tilt my camera up this way a bit 
there we go so you can see um, a bit more so again I can come in and I can fill this with and it's sort of just like a randomly scribbly kind of but it's it's got a roundness to it it's not a scratchy scribble it's a round so I can just put that in as a layer first and then once I want to get that it's like if I want to get this edge darker where the paint is going darker I can sort of really let my pen just travel over it again and again building up so that becomes quite textural so I start off by putting this sort of basic layer over here and again by keeping it really abstract this then really helps it look like shadow because the other pieces are going to have more pattern and more kind of detail on them and this by being quite random sort of gives me a different surface it's sort of like talking about backgrounds and sort of grittiness and sand and sort of that sort of thing I think it's in, I always try and think of it like you know whenever you draw anything no matter how realistic or how unrealistic you're being or representational um, you're being ultimately an image of painting that you're doing it's not real life it's an interpretation of real life and we kind of come up with a language that we use to describe things so we use flat paint blobs we use in delicate sort of um, um, uh, colors we use watercolor all these brush marks that we make are a way of describing what we see in front of us but it's not the actual thing so they're almost like words that we come up with and we say right we all accept that if I draw a letter A that means the sound A so we're kind of saying right when I'm doing this scribbly mark that's my background this is my deep deep background so I'm going to use if I now take that same technique and I bring it over to this side then that starts to locate these dark areas as being background as being underneath and that helps my eye or my viewers eye to accept these sort of layerings if I just very quickly do this piece in here and then I'm going to use exactly the same techniques I did here so it's just uh, just a really squiggly wiggly abstract line you know it's not trying to be anything more complicated than it is I'm probably going to extend it a bit further down here but I just want to quickly get this in so you start to see when I get this level this area here to the same intensity as this one over here your eye will start to connect them as being on the same plane as being the same physical space and they will become background and it, they'll push the coloured orbs in front in front into the foreground um, so it's a bit it's sort of like where image making becomes it has a sort of design quality to it you know you're sort of always having to design this space and this hole that I'm doing here is quite a dark one so I'm going to keep on building up um, my layers keep on working on these marks so that the more I put on the darker that space is going to become um, and the more it's going to be pushing into the background so the general rule is when you're painting or drawing or making images that to get things to disappear you make them darker so you push them backwards with darkness and to make them pop forwards to appear to be in the foot closer you could keep them a little bit lighter and they then or brighter so you see if I get in really tight into there and really build those up that starts to become really intense sort of shadow. And you can see hopefully he's starting to really make this central sort of like green and orange shape is really starting to lift up and you can sort of imagine you could put your hand down and kind of scoop it up because you've got that shadow in there and it's by using this sort of bold darkness and also by using these same mark making because in our visual language we're saying this is my background this is my deepest level and our viewer can our brain starts to understand that and sort of make sense of it if that doesn't all sound too weirdly philosophical and arty. So when I go and I work on this one, same sort of thing, I'm going to de de define it um, central hole like that. It's sort of, and I can go around, and when you get those little sort of cracks like that, it sort of gives you a lovely sort of craggy kind of feel, you know, which makes it, gives it that sort of sense. And then again, on this large one here, I can follow my edge and decide where I want that edge and see where you get these little nibbles of look sort of like sticky out bits of paint there that's a gift because that becomes a spine on the urchin and that's sort of just where the paint has overlapped and it's just run but you won't always get that and some bits you get loads of it and some bits it works but you can always go you know you can draw in as much detail as you want as much as you feel like doing but this sort of building up of layers I think really helps I've got a soft edge here on this shape so I'm going to define this now let's define this purple one 
again just following I've got a big spike there so I'm going to add that in as a spike it's going to be a really sort of vicious um, vicious uh, spiky urchin this one my vicious purple urchin so I'm just going to follow these sort of la layers around and again this edge here I want to get this shape in so that the green one has got and then once I get that edge in see that again now I can really see that one I'm going to darken eventually I'll get this this sort of background texture into this area to kind of make these all pop up and to link this section here with these ones here so they're all kind of working together um, yeah so now I can start adding on this purple one here this is going to be really spiky and we're going very up you know we're not really so that's going to be a really big spiky sticking out there he's going to have quite a he's got quite a sort of a armored nature this one he's definitely a bit more of an assertive assertive sea urchin because all the little puckers that you see are the where they would have had spines in in when they were alive because these obviously are shells of dis, of dead animals which sounds a bit morbid but you know they're like seashells they're cast off they're not wanted anymore but all those little little circles would have had um deadly spines in them and um my husband will tell tales of he grew up in Italy of uh, um, d being paid by the shop, sort of like you know, like lira, you know, which would work worth nothing, but to go diving for sea urchins for the tourists to buy. He used to do that quite a lot, so he's quite romantic about sea urchins. So on this one here, again, if I want to get some this sort of circular pattern, I can do some lovely sort of spirals, kind of coming, and that kind of gives that feeling that they've got. Um, um, sort of points and if you slightly off center the spiral so it comes into to one side or another it starts to look like those points are turning down and then you can bring that into more of a triangular shape and just sort of overlap a little bit and you know we start to get some different sort of textures and they're quite decorative and I quite like bringing sort of quite decorative elements into paintings I'm quite a fan of surface decoration I like all these sort of spirals and twists and again I've just sort of worked those onto that sort of little slightly greener area that I've got on this one so again I can come onto this one and just do it's just a really simple snail spiral like I imagine you've done a doodle of a hundred times before when you're on the phone to that person that you know is going to tell you in excruciating detail about their sort of holiday and you're sitting there drawing all these little spirals sort of going oh it's lovely oh yeah no oh no mm, yeah for about an hour you know but um We've all had someone on the phone like that, I imagine. But these are just like this little, so they just go slightly off centre. So, and by bringing the centre sort of pointing down, it just gives that feeling that they're a little cone that's sort of pointing down that way. Uh, and it just, it's a really nice way of creating form. And then I can bring, if I wanted to, I could bring some of my wavy lines. I do like a wavy line. Just sort of bring them up. And again, bring them so they come together tighter at the neck and then open out a little bit. And it sort of starts to give that feeling that that's a curve sort of descending down into the shape of the shell and like with all these things I find with these ones you kind of start and you can really keep on going with adding in these sort of surface and texture until you can get this really quite intense detailed surface and the way you do it is by constantly looking for an area that you can define so you, you think oh I've no no idea where to start and you go well look I can see there's a stripe there right so I'm going to I'm going to focus on that I'll just get this stripe in and that's all I'm going to do I'm going to just do that stripe and because I can see and I think with this stripe I'm going to put these sort of um, maybe sort of oh, I know what I'll try doing I'll put a big circle and I'll cluster some small circles around it and see what that looks like and all that looks quite nice right okay well so I know what I'm doing on this one so and you think I'll just do this one and then I'll stop and then you get this one done and you think well actually I could do that on another bit too well I'll just do that next bit because I can see that bit and you can just keep going like that so you're not sort of worried people say to me well how do I know when to stop and I say well usually when you literally can't find anything else to draw on it you've probably done enough and then they sort of say oh, well I think I've done too much but I don't know if I've done enough and and I say well look, if you think you haven't you've done too much I would do a lot more uh, and then you definitely will have done too much and it'll be lovely you can really just keep on going and um, that's what I love about them because I can sort of have one on the go throughout a week I can start one of these and you know it's just sitting there it doesn't 
it doesn't tell me that it's not finished it just tells me you know it's it's ready for more if I want to come back to it and if I've got half an hour I can get my pen out and um, I can do a bit more on it and see this one I don't I'm going to just do some on the edge of that and see what that looks like you know I can come back and do a little bit more if I get to sit down of an evening you know um, after all the ironing the thing is done I can come I'll just do half an hour of this while I'm watching you know um, uh, I'll just be like you know whatever all that glitters or glow up or one of those sort of series that I relentlessly watch or you know an episode of uh, whatever Netflix I'm on you know and I can just sit there and I'm not really concentrating on it too much I'm just thinking oh well I've got another stripe to fill so I'll fill that stripe in with some stuff and see what happens with that like with this one I'm going to do some half moon just like almost like bracket shapes but slightly join them together and then as they come up the shape I'm going to turn them more into sort of circles and rounds and so I can sort of like keep one of these going for a week you know and I don't really think about it and then I, by the end of the week I've got this whole surface covered in um, really intense detail and just by following the paint and trying to enhance what's there it has sort of a sense of form and it has a sense of um, structure and layers and lovely surface patterns on it and uh, it's been a fantastic way to spend my week and it's really good if you've got um, a train journey or something I don't I know the train journeys have been a bit of a rarity over the last couple of years but now that things are slowly opening up and you might get to go on a train again sometimes what I'll do is create like small ones like little a5 sized so I'll get either do one big piece and cut it up or I'll um, do um, small some small individual ones and just throw some colors that I love choose three colors that I love at them you know sometimes I get colors stuck in my head and I'll be really into orange and turquoise and and then I'll be into sort of like sea greens and stuff so I'll do that and then um, I'll just have these little sort of cards and a pen and I can just sit and fill in and just l keep looking for what the watercolour is telling you. If you can see a little division, I'm just going to swap to a, light, a thinner pen now because this side is um, quite sort of pale and I, I, I'm going to just honour that, I suppose that sounds like I'm being very pretentious, but you know, I'm just going to reflect that, that's a better word, by picking out very tiny detail that's very subtle but I'm going to use a thinner pen to do it so that it reflects the subtlety of that colour compared to the stronger sort of divisions that I've got on this side. So yeah, so I'll have these and I can just, wherever I'm going, I can add a little bit more and a little bit more. And all the time what you're doing is seeing what a line will describe. So you sort of like, you're just experimenting all the time with the mark making and developing up developing this sort of bank of images that allow you to or bank of surfaces you can create I suppose so if you then come to draw something that's a bit more representational that you want to draw you can say well I remember all these lines they kind of had this quality and it kind of makes me think of seashores or it makes me think of tree bark so I'm going to use this sort of technique to pick out the patterns on the tree or the the seashore that I'm drawing and um see and, and, and I'm going to use that to create this sort of more representational thing but you can see by using these lighter lines on this side it's again this starts to look darker and this looks lighter so you've got a sense of light and dark but I still want to get some of these circles in I'm just going to use, I'm using a point one pen I think the thinnest pen you can buy if you sort of get um, into you can buy a 0.03 millimeter pen which um, is possibly the same. I've got one here, um, although it's absolutely it's, it's very difficult to show you how tiny it is because it's tiny. But that is the, probably the tiniest size you can get. Um, 0 0.1 is usually the smallest you can get. You can get 0 0.05 as well, relatively easily, and uh, they just give you a different kind of feel. And then conversely, if I then, I'm just doing a few more circles at this side, and I'm going to go to a bigger pen, I'm going to do some stronger circles on this side. And you can see how then that gives this sense of shadow and light. So if I then come down here, and I'm going to use um, the thickest pen that I've got to hand, uh, which, oh no, you just, think, oh no, I've got one here. And then, right, so I've got a 0.8 pen here. So then down here, if I use this to outline, and then draw my shapes in. This is going to become strong, slightly stronger looking. 
and darker and it's going to add weight to this side so it's a really useful way of getting light and shade into a drawing just by selecting a different size nib and then again you can't you can't do anything but either be lighter or stronger or darker so I can just use that in to give sort of a bit more weight on that side right so I'm going to come on to this one so let's have a look at where we're sort of developing. I'm trying to make sure that I've sort of covered the main sort of areas that you might want to think about so that when you hopefully get to go away and spend some time building this up for yourself and finish it and sort of like working on it you, you've, you've had sort of ideas another sort of um technique that I quite like or another sort of pattern that I like let's do this on this orange one is to find an edge so I'm going to find I'm back on my point one I think pen so I'm just going to follow that through to that dark center and let's just draw around that center while we go and make that a bit stronger um, I'll quite so it's similar to doing lines sort of wobbly lines this way but I'm going to do some lines that kind of come through the shape and peter out so they just they start on the line that I've drawn and then I just let them kind of um, almost flick them out so they disappear and that kind of gives a nice kind of feeling of edge and I can work my way along I'm sort of almost at an angle leaning to one side to kind of get that flick to work but it just sort of and putting that slight curve on it gives it um, again it makes it look like that's a sort of ridge coming up uh, and gives it a lot of form and texture so I can just bring that and as I come near the top I'm going to make those marks a little bit shorter and maybe closer together or certainly shorter so they're not traveling as much distance and I think that's just quite again quite a sort of interesting just gives a different sort of feel and for this end bit I can sort of bring those coming around so you've got like a sort of this becomes more like a sort of shadow kind of feel and then I can probably add in some circles kind of on top of that because you can always go back and layer in on some of those and that becomes sort of like a shading kind of feel and then so then I've got another line here so let's take that line and define that and just bring that round and then I'm going to take those lines this way so they're going to come across that coloured stripe but just just flicking off that line just to see what that looks like and I so it's almost like it's almost like doing a fantastically huge sampler it's a bit like the way that people used to do needlework samplers this is like a sort of mark making sampler but with the added bonus of these lovely colours and you know I know when I, when I first started going to various art schools and stuff you know you'd have to do a book of sample marks and you'd sit there with little squares of drawn on your paper and each one you'd have to put a different sort of mark in and it was a bit like learning your times tables it was so tedious and in a way this is exactly what we're doing here but it's just a bit more exciting because um, we're not having to we're getting something more out of it we're not just creating samples for their own sake we're actually seeing how they work in in action as it were which i think is much more interesting and often you can get a fantastic image at the end of it which you wouldn't have had beforehand so again i'm going to bring these down just little flicks letting them run out and if they break up a bit across the paper surface that's fine because it just adds some more texture to them and just sort of flicking them across and you can see that where they come together where they're meeting at the line I'm sorry I hope you can't hear too much of the dustmen who are making their Wednesday visit because um, I've got the windows open I do hope that's not coming through too badly um, but as the line sort of joins up then again it gives it a sort of bit of darkness and just gives it a different sort of surface and then you can build up some shapes alongside that and then they become sort of quite high lit and I can do let's do some spirals along there I do like a spiral it's a very satisfying thing to draw and they don't have to be even they work quite well if they're kind of all strange and wobbly and going off at different directions 
and sort of clustering round. But again, you've just got what you think. All oh, a little, little bit of a little bit of pinky purple in there, or peachiness. Let's let's draw around that. Let's um, play with that and make that more obvious. And I've got a nice shape at the end here, so let's sort of make that into a spiral, and that becomes like a little spike sticking up from the side. If you can move a little bit closer. You can see that sort of like. Um, but it's got a nice sort of spiky sort of seashell kind of feel. Okay, so so again where I've got these like big spikes here, I want to make a real thing of those, so let's get that line in and make that nice and defined, kind of going up there and bring that round like that and then that's really nice sharp edge there's a lovely sharp line there so let's bring that in and with these sort of real spiky spinies I can let's put some of those lines kind of coming up to that edge and it will give that a sharp almost like a sort of flint kind of feel so if I come up one side going that way and that sort of given that a lovely sense of form and sort of shape on that side. And then I'm going to do some going the other way, coming off the other side. So if I then bring them that way, it really makes that look like a sort of mountain ridge, something really sharp. And you can see because they're curving like that, it sort of starts to make it look like it's curving in, like it's sort of the, the bits in between the ridges are quite convex, concave, sorry. Get right around cave means going in. Sort of like that. So I've got almost like a sort of spiny kind of feel. And I can do it again coming on this side. I can try not to mask it with my hand too much, but I can bring those flicks off the line. and just moving through that surface and again the individual marks that we're using are really should be really simple they shouldn't be um, you shouldn't have to worry about trying to create I mean if you'll get into creating really exotic patterns please do but you know we can still keep them quite it's just the repetition and the rhythm that we get into them that will give them help them make the piece work you know it's it's thinking about how close together you put them to create more shadow or less shadow and look how the patterns are going to work on the surface we don't have to do highly complicated intricate patterns at all so with this one because I've got this nice sort of spine coming over here I'd like to get some shadow onto this and I want to make this look like it's sticking out over this so although my lines are kind of going down I'm going to slightly ignore them on this one and bring some lines in a similar kind of way but when I hit that spike I'm going to lift up and leave can you see how by getting the pattern coming under that spike it makes it pop up it makes it look like it's definitely on top of that one it sort of like just really helps to sort of locate that and then I can bring my lines in the same with this one I want this one because it's underneath I've got to make that nice and sharp and obviously um, the lines on here we're going to travel underneath that one and disappear under it like that so they start to have that feeling this one is definitely the underneath subordinate seashell bring that through and I've got these lovely bumpy edges so I can where I've got a bump I can put a circle into that bump and that'll start to be where I'm going to put I can sort of build some circles off from that and just because that circle fits into that little wobble of paint it just somehow really makes it locate gives it a sort of reality so bring that those up and just sort of fit those in and this area here is going to have that sort of scribble darkness into it in the same way as these other areas and again that'll help to tell our eye that that's um, background, that that's shadow. So I'm just going to fill these sort of ones in 
And so this is why it's, I find it so relaxing because there's just like, well, I can just going to draw 500 circles on here now. And I, I can see where they're going to go. I don't have to plan or think about it, but um, I'm just going to pack them in and see how they go. And the more I get on, I find that it's sort of like, it's almost like drawing attention to the paint underneath. It sort of like allows you to see that color underneath in a bit more focus. So where I've got that orange band there, I might put a larger circle in there just so that it's all lovely and orange. And then again, just sort of increase that in size so that I'm, although I, I'm doing it in these sort of waves, I'm kind of using the color that's there. So I'm saying, right, okay, where I get an orange, that's going to be a bigger circle and the green is going to be in tighter circles because the green is a bit more of a shadow colour and I might turn some of these into spirals and again if I've turned them into spirals they're slightly darker so I might do spirals around the edge and then if I feel that this bit here isn't dark enough now but I've drawn the pattern in, patterning in there then I can go back to uh, my scribbling and just build up some over to more line work some more scribble line work over and around up to that edge so that I can increase the shadow just by going over that again and if you take a step back and you look and you think that some bit is sort of disappearing then you just got to decide right well I need to get some more pen work onto one side of that to make it pop out a bit more which side am I going do I need to do so you can just and then if you think right well this bit's going to stay light I don't want to put too much work on here or I'm going to use fine pens to draw that because then it will stay fine and it won't be too um, it won't be too heavy it'll stay light and I can just like you know, almost half draw almost even with a, a fairly ordinary size pen if I just draw it very lightly so I'm only half drawing what's there it becomes lighter it looks more like a sunlit area and again I want to get those holes nice and dark inside the urchin and you could colour them all completely black, but I still like just getting a little bit of surface in there, particularly because it allows you to show that there's something happening through the hole. Right, so we've got about a quarter of an hour or so, 12 minutes or so to go. So would, is there any particular part of this people would like me to focus on? Or are there any areas that you'd like me to sort of pick up on so they can see how I might... Um, deal with them. I'm starting to see, I'm hoping that I've given you some enough sort of clues and starting points that you can carry on with this um, on and off throughout the next week and then we can have a look and see where we all took it next week so hopefully we can bring the images I'll, you know and we can uh... so did you want, to, someone got an area that you'd like me to work on particularly? <laughs> we'll just keep going so I can just yeah so hope mm. oh see that's lovely definitely now I'm hoping that as people gain this a bit more we can do some where we use coloured pens on the coloured surfaces because I love working like that I think it works really I didn't want to do it on the first session in case because I would imagine that not everyone's got a whole big range of coloured pens but I, I think as we come on a bit we'll definitely be using more colours because it adds another dimension and I particularly um, I love using white pens to kind of add highlight and sort of then work on top of us so we'll definitely be using white pens as we go on but so, you know I don't want to insist that everyone has a ton of materials but you know hoping that if you find this sort of interesting that you'll want to get some different colors because there's something very different isn't there about drawing the, uh, the the shapes in the same color on top of the color it has a very different quality which I really like and the white pen again is a way of sort of adding highlight which um, works really well yeah Right, so you can get white ink pens, and the ones that I use um, the most, I'll, I'll do a quick demo of some because I think they'd be really appropriate for this image. These are um, acrylic paint markers, and um, it, as it says on the tube, it says marks on anything. It's water-based. It's a bit like, if you want to find, uh, find them, if you Google stone painting pens, or like, you know, people do 
those stone you, you know they're really you can get lo in loads of different colors and what i love about them is that they're quite they're, they're not massively thin but they're also not too chunky and they will go onto pretty much any surface so you can work on top they sort of you have to sort of a bit of a shake and sort of like pump the nibs down but you can add um little sort of highlights and you can see how you know, once you've got your shape in you can go in and add white points of light really easily across that surface you can see just by putting those in here and it really helps to sort of bring different areas to life so you can do fairly detailed line particularly when you're working on a larger scale you can get a lot of kind of detail if i just bring some lines through there i really love the the relationship they have with the sort of black and the white lines together so i would definitely recommend getting those they're so useful they usually come you can usually get a pack of white and black you usually get a pack of white on its own and often they'll do some colors in the same kind of medium so they will draw on anything so obviously you can draw them on stone you can draw on glass you can draw um but what's good is because they go on everything they will draw on these really textured papers now there are other white gel pens you can get and I do really like them but I find they're slightly more they're finer but they can be a bit more temperamental so this is um a white gel pen so it's those and usually they've got like a transparent body and you can see the sort of core of white ink in the middle I find them to be if you get them to work they're really good and then see this one's still not they don't <laughs> I find them really temperamental they, they don't like working on on no, it's not really working this one at all. It's just sort of like scratching the surface. Literally, I don't know if I can get it to, but I need to get it running. You have to kind of get them running first. But if you get, they prefer a smoother medium to work on. So if you're using more like a cartridge paper or the classic sort of black card, you can draw really quite fine lines on sort of black and white, you know, white lines on a black background. But that, this one's definitely sulking today. But so they like that. I find them to be, they, they do tend to be very kind of hit and miss. Um, you can get, uh, these sort of like kids gel pens uh, which you know come in sort of the works and stuff in lovely colourful packets and I find them fantastic I think you can do a lot you can see how I'm just sort of using them on this one to bring up some of the, in, enhance some of the green shapes I could draw um, so I'm using this is like a, you know they come in neon colours they come in glitter colours they come in gold and those sort of things and they're really fun to work with and they're actually really cheap to buy and that's always got to be in their favour really I'm quite keen on you know I don't think why kids should always have all the wonderful materials um, if you want to go into more these are um, uh, 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 um, Arteza, I swear I don't get any money for <laughs> promoting them but they are they, they, they're from Arteza are the Amazon so it's up to you if you want to use Amazon they're the, the Amazon own brand art materials. You often see them on Amazon. It's, it, they actually produce them and they're actually quite good. These ones, they, they do quite a big set of these and they're all 0.4 mil and they're quite nice colours. And they are, what's nice about them is that one of the nice things about them is that they're triangular in cross section, the pen. And why that's nice is that they don't roll off the surface. So if you're working on a table, they, they're far less likely to disappear under it. Um, which is quite handy but again I'm just using a green one um, to come in and add some extra dimension of the sort of colours onto this green one and there is something really nice about working um, green on green you know like a sort of dark green or light green some it's I think it's because when you're casting if you see a, a shadow being cast if it's casting on a surface the surface is still ultimately a shade of that colour so that's why I sort of say you have to be careful of using black with watercolour paint because if you see a shadow cast on a green item it's actually a very very dark green because it's the item colour underneath is still there so you can use this to sort of build up shadow uh, green on green kind of shadow and sort of different dimensions um, there are other brands out there obviously loads of different brands um, Sharpie they do which i've been using on a project so that's why it's just here they do um like a super ultra fine like they do fine and ultra fine pens and you see they're they're sort of quite a good um thin uh nib and they 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 will again work on a lot of surfaces they're not quite as universal as they would have you believe and they don't last quite as long on they certainly don't last on shiny surfaces in quite the way that they would their marketing likes to tell you but um they are a pretty good pen and again they're not overly expensive so and you can get a reasonable range of colors i tend i do use a lot of very fine lines in what i'm doing so i'm always looking for them in the really fine color then we've got um 
the Sakura, who are a, a, a Japanese pen brand, and they are sort of really good. They go down to a 0 0.5. So this is a green 0 0.5. They have a limited range of colours, but um, they do have some colours. So you can usually get a blue and a green and a red, the sort of prime, you know, the basic primaries and a couple of secondary colours in those, um, which is nice. They do a lovely sepia set, which is, um, which I've got you can probably tell I buy a lot of pens as I'm just sort of realizing how many I'm able to show you in this one moment so this is a sepia pen so something on the orange you know it gives it that nice sort of rusty feel and they look like sort of old um, photograph kind of colors so this one they do quite a good range for sizes in um, I think occasionally you can even find a brush pen in sepia and I was using it last night for a tabby cat drawing so but again it's just really interesting having the same color as the sort of pattern on top of its background color I think it makes it really interesting to see I will scan my picture um, the problem I have is that I have so many things on that I don't often get you know I have so many unfinished ones that if I waited till I'd finished this one you'd be getting it months in advance months away from now so I will scan where I am now and send it through to you because then you can if I do it at a reasonable res you can zoom in and look quite closely at some of the details and I've, that's quite useful too to see but you can see I'm just sort of putting a bit of sepia on that one there um, and uh, and the other brand that if you want to go for a sort of uh, a posher brand that I do like is a Windsor & Newton they do a range of pens in they do uh, they're not so commonly available but if you can find Jackson's Art Supplies which I don't know if, if you've not found them your bank balance will not thank me for introducing you to them. Um, but Jackson's are online. They do. They have a beautiful shop, which one day I think I will do a pilgrimage to. Um, but they have a lovely online website, and they have a huge range of pens, and they actually are often a better price than Amazon, and they are a British independent firm, so we should definitely be supporting them. They have a huge range of what um, papers they call, but they're filed under surfaces. Um, and they've got a lot of pen papers and watercolour papers. This watercolour paper, which is an Indian rag paper, I got from them. And they do a lot of loose sheets of paper, which I prefer to using a sketchbook because um, you can buy as many as you want and they're usually cheaper because they haven't been, you haven't had to pay to have them put in a book, you know. Um, but they do a lot of these Windsor & Newton pens and they come in, There's a, this set is a, an indigo blue set and they do a nice purple and they do grey and they do sepia and of course they do black as well. So those are my top tips for pen recommendations and I think if we can get some more coloured pens, if you'd like to think about getting some, I su certainly suggest you get a white pen, one of these acrylic pens because they are fantastically cheap and cheerful. You can get a pack of well for like a fiver you know that sort of level which I approve of no end um, and um, I think because then we can start using some more colours in the pen work and it does just give you that different vibe a different feel because again where you if I just zoom in onto this blue one here a bit you can see where I've got the um, that's it. you can see where I've used just the blue on there and it gives it like a sort of it's a much lighter impact so the pattern is there but it's another way to build up texture and therefore it makes these black ones look chunkier and more defined and these look sort of like a more flat kind of background surface so it's another way of getting depth and giving yourself a whole range of colors to work on so and I quite like to think that you know people will kind of get the sense that these are sea urchins even if we've gone very sort of like unreal you know I'm not in any way to sort of worried about the curves and worried about trying to make them perfect and I think from just relaxing and finding the shapes in them and sort of working on the surfaces we've sort of actually created quite a sea urchin -y looking end product which I think is quite interesting but then you can see how the blue is really lovely working in into that sort of surface and you can build it up gradually you can do more and more spirals and then by doing the shapes like that you're not just adding colour you're adding surface and texture and shadow because you can zoom those spirals in and make them and the tighter you spiral the more that becomes like a sort of dark spot but it's not just something you've drawn uh, it's not just a spot it's got a, a surface and a texture to it as well so there we go so that's sort of where we start from hopefully what you've got from this is a piece that you will feel inspired to continue with over the week 
and keep adding to. But I hope also you can see that by using these sort of pattern lines, this has given this a really lovely three dimensional feel and you've got this sense of surface. So you feel like if you were to pick it up, you would feel that sort of bumpy surface on it. And that's kind of what we're really aiming to do. Okay, so I think uh, we'll come back together again and I'd, I'd love to see what you felt about your first session.